Hi, my name is Amira Bruin, and this is my speech to inform my audience on arguments for and against the Commission of the Status of Black Men and Boys Act. Today, I will go over three main points, what this commission will do, why we need it, and why some people might disagree and want to change it. Blackdemographics.com states that while Black people only make up 30% of the United States population, they account for 60% of those imprisoned. The Bureau of Justice Statistics states that one in three Black men can expect to go to prison in their lifetime in America. First, it is important to understand what this specific statute states so we can better understand why some disagree with this regulation and want to change it. Section 2163 will follow through with the commission of the examination of social disparities that affect the day-to-day -day life of black males in America. From education, police brutality, fatherhood to gun violence, this act represents a permanent delegation aimed to correct the civil rights issue in America. According to section 2163, it aims to fix education, justice and civil rights, healthcare, labor employment, and housing for the black population in America. This act started by Federico Wilson, backed by Marco Rubio and Nancy Pelosi, eliminates the educational, economical, and other disparities that make it more difficult for black men and boys to thrive in this country by studying a range of societal issues. Section 2163 states, homicide, arrest and incarceration rates, poverty, violence, fatherhood, mentorship, drug abuse, death rates, disparate income, wealth levels, school performance and all grade levels, including post-secondary and college, and health issues will all be under review and reported back to relevant government agencies and programs. Now I will dive in to why this act is important and why it is necessary in today's society. Everyone knows the story of George Floyd, Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor, and Samir Rice. What if I told you that in the first eight months alone of 2020, 164 black individuals were killed by police in America. Speaker Nancy Pelosi stated, America is undergoing a transformative movement as we confront and combat the racial injustice and police brutality that are killing hundreds of black Americans, particularly men and boys. This act is for them. This commission will be a critical force for acknowledging the institutional racism that black men and boys face every day in America, and then working to end it. Black men on average earn less money, are less likely to graduate from college, are more likely to be sent to prison or arrested and to die at younger ages than other men in our society. Kenneth Allen, chairman of the Indiana Commission on the Status of Black Males stated, despite our many years of frustration and struggle, I still believe America can turn around the horrifying statistics for black males. It is time America to act. It is time to finally confront the disastrous, too often deadly reality that millions of black males in America must face. My hope is that my daughter, when she is my age, will not have to march for justice, equity, for black males. Now, I will cover why individuals disagree with this act being put in place and why they believe it is unnecessary. Individuals who oppose this believe that black personnel are treated equally in the eyes of the law. They assume that the minority group doesn't face humiliating and offensive slurs on a daily basis. Individuals believe Black Lives Matter to be a political angle and that America gives everyone an equal opportunity in life. Black and white Americans use drugs at a similar rate. However, black individuals are six times more likely to go to jail for this behavior. Individuals who oppose this act simply believe racism, 
doesn't exist or that it's not that big of an issue and that this act is unnecessary or won't accomplish much. The sad reality is that black lives have not mattered in America for over 300 years. As a society, we need to act to ensure true equality for black men and boys in this country. Some may disagree, but the current statistics are undeniable. Something needs to change, and I believe this act is the first step. By reviewing the homicide rates, arrests and incarceration rates, poverty, violence, fatherhood, mentorship, drug abuse, death rates, disparate income, wealth levels, school performance, and all grade levels, and health issues, we will be able to pinpoint and correct this problem in America. Now is the time to stand with people of color within your communities and try to continue to take action. Thank you. So this is my card, number one, and number two, and then this is number three, number four, number five, and number six. Thank you.